Hello everyone, my name is Hero, and welcome to my AC Builds Garage. I hope to bring you many good, strong, and very wacky AC builds that you at home can give a try on. My end products will always grant you an understanding as to what my builds do, and how well they fare in certain content. I always recommend you give them a try at least once, and then use them as a base template for new and exciting builds to build upon. Today's very first build is designed for those that enjoy aerial denial setups involving a lot of fire in the making. Meet my first build, the Hot Potato. My Hot Potato build is designed for air to ground combat and aerial denial operations for enemy ACs and campaign AI enemies. Utilising tetrapod legs to stay in the air for X amount of time, the following can control areas to prevent targets from escaping easily and then saturate the area with rockets and flames to prevent escape. Are highly effective against ACs with poor energy management or those who stick to the ground a lot. This is a build I've wanted to do for a while, using flamethrowers instead of napalm, but truth be told, flamethrowers suck in terms of damage, and they only work well when you combine them with an equally consistent weapon to trigger stag damage. Napalms do feel weak at first, but they have great coverage when applied in small areas. On top of that, combining them with anything else that has AoE effects on areas makes it hard for a number of ACs to avoid damage at all. So, to achieve what I have, I've gone with a heavy tetrapod frame AC that allows me the strength to take a number of hits while in the air, but also be capable of changing to ground to ground combat if required. Starting with weaponry, I have the dual MA-T-222 Kaiore Napalm Launchers. It has decent damage and impact damage build up over time, which can be powerful when combined with a back unit that can also punish. In my case, I went with the SB-033M Morley Spread Bazooka that has great AoE effect and also worked the charm when using to punish stun targets. It is a rather underused weapon that has great potential when combined with the right setups that can stun targets fast and then punish straight after. Although it's a bazooka, it acts more like an explosive shotgun that can deal massive damage to those who focus on close range fights and also get stunned quite easily. At the same time, using this one in the air may feel slightly useless because of its spread range, but do remember, when combined with area denial primaries like we have, it can make dialing onto targets a lot more easier. After that, I then went with the BML-G1P07VTC Dash 12 Vertical Missile Launcher. The 12 cell version is great for applying pressure on top of what we have, and if we are lucky, getting a stun with our rockets while napalm is bringing down to a target will provide quite a damage boost that is hard to generally avoid. Now, armor I went for is to focus on getting enough armor points to tank shots while also having decent energy recovery. Ahead, we have the HD 033M Vareil. Body, we have the 07-061 Mind Alpha. Arm, we have the DF-AR-09 Tian Lao. Legs, we have the LG-033M Viril. For our booster, we have the BC-0600-12345. And FCS, we have the FCS-G2P05. Generator is the Ming Tang, which is highly recommended. An expansion is down to you, but assault armor is recommended. I do want to make myself clear here. All items shown are the final product of what makes the build how it is. However, you don't need to follow this down to a T, as I always, always recommend you customize your liking. Every build I do is more of a blueprint to build upon and discuss further improvements on, so please do take these builds as they are and just enjoy them. The pros and cons for using the build does vary, but a lot of it, of course, is understandable. For example, the ability to stay in the air for quite a while allows our attacks to be consistent when ringing down targets below with whatever attacks we have in mind to use. On top of this, it also makes it quite easy to predict incoming attacks from targets who decide to get closer to you. Another pro is that ease of use for the build allows players of all types to easily put their following on without the need of endgame components. The weapons used can be easily unlocked through standard story mission or objectives, while body parts used can be anything you like, as long as the legs are tetrapods. This allows users to expand on weaknesses that they may feel isn't as noticeable than before. 
Cons, however, is how exposed you are while in the air. This is a common con from using tetrapod legs in general, as you can use them while on the ground, but they excel the most when in the air. If you are adaptive to your surroundings, then using the following while in the air isn't that much of an issue, as energy levels provided will give you a quick recovery. You do, however, want to be careful when using this against the ACs that focus on speed the most, as they are the ones capable of avoiding your attacks, while also dishing out a good amount of damage back. So, that is the build in a nutshell. Now, I'm going to show you some arena battles I had with the following build, just so you know how well it works against certain ACs, and how, from learning the gameplay, you too can adapt and create your own version. Enjoy the rest of the video, and if you like what you see, please do leave a like and a sub, and I'll catch you all in the next one.
percent. AP at thirty. 